Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is the element of hip pain and what are some of the things that can cause that hip pain, what we can potentially do about treating it, and how we can be able to prevent it potentially in the future. Okay, so specifically there's two things that we're going to talk about in regards to hip. The first of which is the aspect of the anatomy, the second of which is the disease process. Okay, so when we take a look at the element of the hip, one of the things that we see is that it's not what we think it is. Many people, when they refer to the element of the hip, are actually talking about this bone right here. When you feel it, it's what is just above your belt line most of the time. The fancy technical term for that is something that's called the iliac crest. But that's not actually what we're talking about when we're referencing the hip. What we're talking about is the aspect of how this femur bone fits in on an angle into this socket that's present here. Okay? A closer, more involved view is present on the, the components of this picture here. As you can kind of see, this is this ball and socket that's present as part of the component of the bone, and it fits into the element that's like a cup. To use the fancy terms, this is the femur with the greater trochanter and the elements of something that's called the acetabulum. Okay? And so what we, what we look at frequently is how the cartilage, which exists here, how intact it happens to be, and whether there's some element of it having some degree of erosion. When that starts to happen, which we can see under x-ray, you can get pain that's not only present within this portion of your body, but also in the portion that's present right here that can refer down into the elements of the inguinal region or the groin, if you would. And occasionally, it can go back to the backside, down into your buttock a bit. And so those things help us be able to make a determination about whether you have this problem. And so we'll see a number of those things on, on exam when you have an issue that's present with an erosion of the tissue that's there. The fancy term for it is degenerative changes that are present within the component of the hip or simply put hip arthritis that exists. Okay? So when we take a look at some of the pictures, one of the things that we can be able to see is that once you cut away from the element of the cuff that you can see in the element of the bone that we talked about before, you can see exactly how that hip fits in and the potential overhangs that can exist. There's something that's called a cam defect, which is a natural occurring component of bone that can overlay the aspect of the hip and cause some degree of pinching that can give you an issue and cause further pain that exists. And so what we look to do is to be able to do a couple different things to try to be able to ameliorate that pain. The first of which is to potentially be able to give you some, some medication, typically a steroid, in that location. So if I was showing you directly, what we do is we take a look at the aspect of the hip, we use a live x-ray like we would in many techniques, and we take a needle mimicked by my probe here and place it in essence right in this area in this region. And so we're going to give you some medicine. It's a fairly quick procedure takes maybe on the order of about 10 minutes or so. Clearly we don't do that in the office because we're using live x-ray to be able to determine where it's located. Okay? Occasionally we'll use ultrasound, which is a machine, as you very well know, that has the sound waves that lets us see not only the element of the bone, but also the tissue to see if there's something that's different from what we would normally expect, and we can give medication via that, that route as well. So that's the element of a hip injection for arthritis, or intraarticular degenerative changes. Secondly, there's another potential problem that can exist as well, and that's something that's called hip bursitis. So the bursa itself, as you can see from this picture, has a component of fat that exists in between the element of the bone and the element of the muscle that exists. There's a better picture that shows a close-up view that looks similar to this. So again, you can see the hip that exists, as we know before, that fancy term that I talked to you about before, the iliac crest, and down here is the component of where the femur fits into that cup or acetabulum, as I talked to you about before. The blowed up view is off to this vantage point over here on the side. What we see is the element of the bone, we see the femur, as I talked to you about before, the muscle that comes down and runs over it, and then you have the element of this aspect of something that's called a bursa. So what is the bursa, as I talked to you about before? It's fat, but it's good fat. It's supposed to be there. In essence, what takes place is that muscle rubs along the element of the bone. 
and that muscle can fray. It can become inflamed. What that bursa does is it prevents that from happening. In essence, it's as you would kind of describe a pulley with a rope that runs on the pulley. If you have that bursa there, it's like a greased wheel that lets that muscle be able to move and lets you be able to do the motion that's present in your leg, lets you be able to walk effectively. When you have bursitis, which is an inflammation of that bursa, what you'll feel is you'll feel pain right there on the side, typically down low near the elements of your, your buttock. So when I, or another healthcare provider, examines you, you can feel that tenderness that's present there. So the question is, is what do we do about that in order to be able to make that feel better? The main thing that we do is we give medication at that site. So if I was using a larger model to kind of represent that so you can see it in better detail, in essence, what we see is that that burst is going to exist in this context right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to give you some medication that's going to basically be placed here. The initial way which we do this is via fluoroscopy. And so that's the x-ray, the live x-ray that allows us to be, be able to determine our needles touching. However, on occasion, that won't be sufficient. So what we'll need to do is use an ultrasound machine. Again, a machine that has that sound wave technology that lets us see how muscles insert onto the bone. And what we'll do is we'll go and we'll find that specific muscle that feeds into that area of the bone that's like that pulley system that I talked to you about before. And we'll track along that muscle, giving medication as we go. There's some doctors who do this with a blind approach, but by using the different technologies of either the live x-ray or ultrasound, it lets us have a much better success rate and a much better outcome for you.